today, the day after Good Friday, the day before Easter. It's Saturday, it's a day we don't actually talk about too much when it comes to the Easter story. And yet, I think today there's some significant things that we can think about. I mean, I can't imagine what it must have been like to be the disciples, to be the followers of Jesus that had walked with Jesus, witnessed his life, witnessed all that he had done, and then all of a sudden arrived to today after everything has happened, what they must have been thinking and wondering about. In fact, can you imagine what it would have been like just a week ago, walking through the streets of Jerusalem, the crowds gathering around you and the people shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And then just yesterday, walking through those same streets and the crowd shouting, crucify him, crucify him. As he was led through the streets, taken up to a hill, nailed to a cross, and there he died. And so now today we come to a story from John chapter 19. Jesus is dead. The cross is actually empty, but he's buried in a tomb. In the story in John chapter 19, we hear the story of a man named Joseph of Arimathea. And what it says is John describes him. He says, Joseph was a man that followed Jesus, except it said that he followed him secretly because he was afraid. He was afraid of, of the religious leaders. He was afraid of the people in his city, his own neighbors that didn't quite believe what Jesus taught. And so he, instead, he lived secretly. But at this point, he didn't want to live secretly anymore. This wasn't how he wanted to be known as a follower of Jesus. So it says he came and he asked for the body of Jesus so that he could honor Jesus and bury him. In fact, it says that Joseph and a man named Nicodemus, who also had met with Jesus secretly earlier on in the life of ministry of Jesus, they came together to bury Jesus in a tomb. Now, as I look at the lives of these two men and the contrast that exists really with the followers of Jesus, they, they, they stand out to me in such a significant way. Because although that they had lived in fear, although they had kind of approached this whole idea of following Jesus, not necessarily the right way. At this point, now after all of this has happened, they said they were not gonna live in fear any longer. They were done with that kind of fear and instead, they actually came to the men who had crucified Jesus, who had put him to death. They came to those guys and said, we'd like the body of Jesus. Can we take him and bury him? Can we honor him? Because we don't want to live in fear anymore. But then what about the other disciples? What about those who had witnessed the life and ministry of Jesus, who had followed him, done life with him, who were his best friends? Where were they? At this point, Peter, James, and John, and all the other guys, they had completely ran in fear. They were nowhere to be found. And think about that, the entire expectation they had on what it must have been to be followers of Christ, the picture of the Messiah, what they expected Jesus to do, all of their expectations were crashing around them. Nothing was as it was supposed to be. In fact, even one of the disciples, Judas, one that had followed Jesus had even at one point probably said, I love you to Jesus. He was one that had betrayed Jesus. No one could comprehend that this was going to be the guy that would eventually hand Jesus over to his death. Today, the Saturday, nothing was as it was supposed to be. Jesus was not supposed to be dead. The disciples were not supposed to be running and hiding in fear. Nicodemus and Joseph were not supposed to be burying Jesus in a tomb. For some, fear had overtaken them and was consuming them, but yet for others, like, like Joseph and Nicodemus, fear was being defeated, and in light of all that was happening, their love for Jesus was growing. Their commitment to who he was was actually growing in the middle of what seemed like the greatest tragedy that they could have imagined. This is a reminder for us today. It feels like Saturday, like the day after Jesus' death, because this is not what we have planned for life to be, and it wasn't what they had planned for life to be either. But how are we going to respond? Are we ready to respond and still show hope even before Sunday comes? 
because that Saturday while Jesus was in the tomb, while they were burying him, Jesus was still victorious. They couldn't see it yet, but they still had to choose to live in hope over fear. Joseph and Nicodemus, they were making a choice to step out of where they once had lived, to now live differently in light of who Jesus was. So what will we choose today? What will we choose knowing what's coming tomorrow? How will we begin to show those that we can live in victory, in the hope, so that when Easter morning comes, not just tomorrow, but when it comes for our city, our neighborhood, our country, we can keep saying, look, see, we showed you there's hope because of who Jesus is. This is the story of Easter 2,000 years ago, and this should be our story today.